Irish, Lucy Trump, our key player of the game, sophomore outside hitter from Florence, Kentucky, who played out of her mind in the win over Virginia, setting a season high 18 kills, five service aces, 14 digs, and just to add the cherry on top, four blocks. Pick got going quickly. With Vasquez Gomez at the service line. Drunick up to Trump, goes out of bounds, and the Panthers open up on a 2-0 scoring run. Officials wasting no time getting this game started today. As I mentioned, both of these teams have a lot at stake. Pitt wanting to revive themselves, and Notre Dame wanting to keep that winning streak alive. Vasquez Gomez gets it across. Drunick up to the freshman laying on the deflection. Notre Dame answers for a point of their own to send their libero and team captain, Hattie Monson, to the service line. And notice how Lang got super high in that approach. She had plenty of space to work with, and if you give Lang space, she's going to get that kill. She's an immediate impact for this team as a freshman. She's been contributing on the offset with Palazzolo in the back line. Monson gets a forearm somehow. Palazzolo goes to chase it. And we'll get it over. Pitt will be allowed to set up their system. Irish pick up the point as Bob Babcock came in contact with the net. Net violation for Babcock, and that's going to happen when you're all of 6'5", tallest girl on the team, and the team's leader, and kills for the Panthers. Hudson gets it across. Up to the other side to Stafford, and it's out of bounds. Stafford's approach looked great there from the outside, but she's got a leash in that power. It usually takes her a few hits here and there to perfect that throughout the match. Babcock, Drunick, able to dig it out. Monson passes to Palazzolo, tries to sneak it over the block. Pick up, up to Babcock. Quickly set to the middle blocker, Emma Monks, who seventh in the nation in blocks per set, but find a way to get a kill herself. And Monks is great at learning how to go around that block. She either goes right or left, or sometimes she can even go right through, depending on if she wants to tool that block. Nicely done, Monks. Pace to be a middle blocker, maybe have that know-how and that IQ as a blocker yourself trying to get around it. And you can go any direction, which is the purpose of the middle blocker, something that the right side and outside hitter don't have the luxury of. Lang works it through the block with power. Talk about working through that block. As you can see, the block party over here was solid for Pittsburgh Panthers, but watch the right side of your screen. She uses all of her spatial awareness, and she's, not able, and she's able to go through the seam of that block. Lang second on the team in kills per set. Stafford quickly sets it down. We talk about Stafford getting her hit figured out really quickly. She missed that same shot last time, but had plenty of space and plenty more time. Watch to the right side of your screen, fully swing, down 45 degrees past the 10-foot line for a dominant kill for Stafford. Runick up to Trump. Couldn't get it over the block. Really good set by Drunick, and she's one of those setters who she likes to set front row and back row, and Trump is one of those players that can either hit back row or front row, but just mistimed that jump. Babcock back. Gets a service ace quickly over the net and hitting the hardwood. What a serve from Babcock. That was stunning. She has 19 service aces on the season so far. One of the best servers for the Panthers. Back to go again. Palazzolo receives the serve. Lang can't get a deflection. Go pits way on out of bounds. It was a nice idea by Lang. When she's on the outside, she usually can go for that cross-court shot, but she tried to go down line and just misjudge where the tape was. Panthers starting to pick up some heat. 
4-0 scoring run. Babcock leading the way, but commits a service error. Hit Notre Dame back to the attack. Babcock trying to judge how hard she needs to hit it. With a serve like that, when you throw it that high in the air and it has a top spin like that, it can sometimes be hard to control. Lane comes off for her fellow freshman, Alyssa Manitsis. Five-foot defensive specialist to come on and serve. Effort off the block. Drunick quickly to Trump. Have four touches for the Irish to pick up the point. Although that was called an air from the Panthers, what a hit from Lucy Trump. Nitsis uses the top of the net to get it across. Drunick off to Palazzolo, tries to sneak it behind, and a beautiful opportunity for Palazzolo to slow it down. Can we talk about how Manitza set that up for success off the let serve? And you see Palazzolo knows when to go soft on that tip. But back to Manitza, a let serve when the ball dances on top of the net to get the Panthers out of system so Palazzolo can work and get that kill. Stafford, Monson, Drunick. A battle at the net. Kept it alive, Tarnoff gets it across somehow, but it goes out of bounds. That's gonna happen with a joust at the net, but you can see the defensive effort from Hattie Monson. Coach Salima Rockwell said she will sacrifice her body on that. We saw that here as she almost dove into the scores table, Jacob. That's what you gotta love out of your senior floor captain. Putting her body on the line for the team. Drunick up to Trump who has it set down Quickly. Wokolo with the rejection, and she will be credited for the block solo, something that's really tough to do. Watch Wokolo's hands, both up, and she goes right to the left. She knew where that ball was coming. Great spatial awareness for her. Needs this to Drunik. Tarnoff tries to push it over and just out of the reach of the diving clicker. A great opportunity for Tarnoff to show what she's made of. Also a hard hitter, but knows when to just tip it over, and she managed to tip it right over that block, which is Rockwell's goal for this squad. AC Alexander, the serving specialist, now in for the Irish. Oklahoma oh, able to be on the move and get the kill. Wokolo on the slide, too kind of lost track of her when she ran over to the right side. She's very smooth, light on her feet, but has a hard hit. I mean, click up. Now back to serve. Drunick dumps it off herself, catches everybody looking. We talked about it, Haley, pregame, how Drunick has been so good at dumping. She is not afraid. It's like the no-look pass that Patrick Mahomes does. That is what her nickname is going to be. The setter's kind of like the quarterback in a volleyball scenario. And Drunick capitalized on that play. Behind the back set to Babcock. Palazzolo has it set down by Mox. Monks and Fairbanks teaming up on the block. Both of them well over six feet tall. Monk standing tall at 6'4". It's really hard to get around that duo, especially from the right side when you don't have the perfect set. Joel Fairbanks now to serve for the Panthers. Palazzolo tried to get down and dig it out, but you also, hey, you had a little a palm on it. Put me in the stat sheet because I have a touch today. <laughs> I got a touch. Hopefully that's the only one, though. You don't want to see me out there. We call games for a reason, right, yeah. Jacob? None of us. There is a reason we, we're behind the mic and not out there. <laughs> service error gets Irish and Sydney Palazzolo to the service line. And Pitt already two service errors on the night. Fairbanks has to go chasing for it. McDowell has it blocked, but has it go out of bounds. Bit 
able to stay composed. Vasquez Gomez. Some digs. Lang off the block, Palazzolo there to provide backup. Trump through the block and gets it down, and Lucy Trump continuing where she started from Friday. Trump making a statement earlier. Watch how she can work with all of this space from the outside, and she manages to find not quite the seam of the block, but that right hand of Stafford. Coach Rockwell talked to us in the non-conference late about how Lucy Trump need to find a way to get over those big blocks and doing it right here against some of the best. She is, she's not as tall as some of her opponents on Pitt's team, but she makes up for it by just adjusting her body. Volleyball is a game of slight adjustments, especially when you're a powerful outside hitter like Lucy Trump. To add to that, Panthers head coach Dan Fisher said Trump was such a problem for them last year, and she's going to be a key focus for Pittsburgh's defense. Yeah, Trump last year led the team with 252 kills. Palazzolo from the back line. Can't get it into the hardwood, and that will take us to our first media timeout. Pitt and Notre Dame going back and forth. Eighth ranked. Welcome back to Purcell Pavilion. Pitt leading Notre Dame 15-11 in this first set. We'll take a look at Salima Rockwell in her second year as the head coach for Notre Dame. And comes in an illustrious coaching career. She sure does. She spent nine years coaching at her alma mater, Penn State, where she was a three-time All-American setter. And just recently, she said to her Fighting Irish, are you, this is time to put Notre Dame on the map. Are you going to let teams punch you in the mouth, or are we going to come out stronger and tougher? Talked about Notre Dame being that position that would take her out of retirement. She was part of ESPN's broadcast teams for the national championship, and she got the call from Missy Coburn, athletic director, charge of volleyball, said it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. She's really come so far, and she only had six players on her roster when she first came in just two seasons ago. We talked about her, that with her on the coach's call, and she kind of laughed and said, I have only six, but hey, look at me now. Look what she's able to do, not only in the media world, but the coaching and playing world as well. Trinic quickly gets it up to Lang, who has it pushed down. Barucolo. And on the other side for Rockwell, her counterpart on the other bench, Stan Fisher in his 11th season at Pitt. He has a contract through 2027. He is highly respected in Pittsburgh. He's guided more teams to the NCAA tournament than any other coach in Panthers history. So as you can tell, he is after that first national championship for his volleyball squad. And he said this is the team that could do it, especially with that illustrious freshman class that he has. They're one of the best in the country and highest in program history for him. And since coming here, he's put the Panthers on the map. And also, He's going to be here for a little bit. He has a contract extension through 2027 that he signed back in 2021. And he has his roots in NAIA volleyball as well. Has a national championship with Concadia back in 2012 and took that next step to the D1 level with Pitt. Clearly a good leader to have at the top of the position. He talked with us in the coach's call about building culture and how they really all feel like a family, a Panther family, as he put it. But really great coaches that we're working with here at the helm. Just taking every last second of the timeout, understanding how pivotal this first set is to have the momentum to your back. We talked about what was going to happen with this match if they were going to come out strong or if they were going to be a little tired. Both teams have played a lot of buffing ball this weekend and had very different results for both of these squads. Flood back to serve for the Panthers. Drunick behind the back set to Trump. Goes cross court. Flood's able to dig it out. Stafford gets the kill. 
Trump and Tarnoff not fully connected on that block. If they would step just one step to their left, they would be able to block Stafford, but Stafford just with a high IQ able to go to the right of that block. And how quickly she got it down onto the court. Trunick up to Palazzolo from the back line. Couldn't sneak it in. Palazzolo struggling with that back row shot right now. She's gone to the left a couple of times and still gauging whether or not to hit it too hard to, towards the back corner. Pittsburgh on a 5-0 scoring run. Tarnoff is able to end that scoring run, get Notre Dame and Lucy Trump to serve. Beautiful capitalization from Tarnoff. That's called a one set, where the set is just barely above the net so she can throw down and she doesn't really have to swing too hard. It's right there for her to pound into the floor. Quickly over, what a play and what a move by Wokolo. I haven't seen a move like that in a long time. It took me a second to see where the ball was, but Setter tipped it and Wokolo tipped it as well. So two back-to-back -back tips. Take a look, middle of your screen. Tipped it to the right of the court that wasn't being well defended by the Irish at that time. Change in direction mid-air. Drunick dumps it over. Stafford. Hard kill. And Stafford saw that Drunick was not in position after she went up to set, and you could see her slide back over to block. Drunick's quick, but Stafford might be quicker when it comes to hitting in that approach. And for the Pitt Panthers, they're already getting some freshman use with Stafford leading the way with three kills today, and it's one of the best in the country. Yeah, Fisher said that was a fair assessment to say that they have Olivia Babcock, Tori Stafford, Blair Bayless, Haiti Tuwatua from Hawaii. They have all of these big statement players, and he thinks and truly believes that these players can lead him to that national championship. And also made a note that he loves recruiting in Hawaii and that these Akeo sisters have been a true blessing, as well as adding Haiti to this squad in 2023. Yeah, for Fisher, Stafford, first Panther signee with multiple All-American honors in high school, talking about that illustrious career. So that when they come in, and you're seeing it here today when you talked about it on the top of the broadcast with Stafford and Babcock, that they're ready to come in and contribute right as a freshman. You don't have to wait. Exactly, and usually you talk about the best thing about freshmen is they're going to be sophomores next year. But no rush for them because they are already leading this team. They're leading the offensive charge. And even you got to take a look at some of these other players like Blair Bayless, the freshman outside hitter from Plano, Texas. She played Friday, played 26 out of 60 sets so far. So although she's not getting as much attention as, say, Stafford or Babcock, he has a deep bench this year with a lot of depth. Any of them are ready to go. That's what you need if you want to try and make a national championship run is to have a diverse offense and being able to not have one person you can really single out and try and defend. Exactly, and this could be the squad to do it this year. So close for the Panthers last year as well in that final four run. Freshman Babcock can't get it over the net. Timeout pays dividends for Rockwell. That timeout to ice the server, oldest trick in the book, and Babcock lost her momentum, just missed time that high top spin jump serve. Nisus now in to get it across. Ford receives the serve from the back line. Babcock couldn't get it in the court. Notre Dame trying to create a little bit of offense here in set one. Stafford has jump ticket. Palazzolo up to Drunick. Stafford has it get over, and Trump can't get it to one of her teammates. The Fighting Irish just out of system over there. You can see Stafford going up. She has the ability to switch her body position. She's an outside hitter, but able to turn her body to where it's more of a right side hitter shot. Stafford, it's across, Drunick, up to turn off in motion. Babcock, 
Brunick now to Palazzolo, off the top of the net. Klicka goes searching for it. Vasquez Gomez has it sat down by Drunick and Tarnoff. Drunick knew that was money. Her and Tarnoff had perfect timing on this block. Four hands, 20 fingers. They saw Vasquez Gomez coming from a mile away and were able to shift a little bit to the left because they saw Vasquez Gomez was going more towards that middle. Alexander gets it across. Needs this. Drunick up to Trump. Mistimed it, just has to set it across. Vasquez Gomez has it rejected, and on the deflection, Pitt is two away. We're getting some action over here, Haley. Another touch Woo. by me. That's two. Two. Yeah, really got to go in the stat sheet through. now. I know. I have my jersey waiting for me over here on the sidelines. Clicka. Drunick. Palazzolo. Hard kill for the junior transfer from High Point. In my humble opinion, that was Palazzolo's best hit that she's had in the set so far. Perfect setup from Drunick, and when she's in system and has that space to work, she's lethal. Off the deflection. Stafford's able to put another one in the stat sheet. Pitt. Now at set point, in control with Fairbank serving. Drunick on the back to Palazzolo. Johnson passes to Palazzolo again. Hapcock gets it across. Set it to Fairbanks. Irish tried to contend it, but it's Pitt in the first set here in set two. Fairbanks will start it off for the Panthers. Dow tried to get it across. Monson with a beautiful dig. Monks. Able to get the kill. Monks called that one. She said, mine. And she ran through the middle and got a perfect jump right over the 10 foot line. She knew that one was hers from the set. Trunick up to Lang. Blocked by Monks. Starting off strong here in this second set. Both Babcock and Monks, a wall, 6'5 and 6'4. That's 12 feet combined. If you put them on top of each other, that is a really tough wall to get around. Fighting Irish are going to have to go to the right of that block or through the seam if they want to be successful. Service error from Fairbanks. Gets Notre Dame the opportunity to get their first touches from the service line. Fairbanks 17th air so far on the season and a much needed point for Notre Dame to get back in the swing of things. Fairbanks sets it to Monks. Fairbanks again on the back. Babcock. A block by Lauren Tornoff on an island. Wow. Tor Tornoff was there and ready for that. Take a look, right side of your screen first, Hattie Monson has a powerful dig, and then Tarnoff is right there for the insane block. Now that's going on the highlight reel. Tarnoff works it through, and back-to-back -back points coming from the middle blocker. Tarnoff does it again, really spatially aware for the middle blocker, able to see that opportunity where she can just hit it 45 degrees right down to the floor. Fairbanks, up to Vasquez Gomez. Notre Dame starting to feel themselves. It's a much needed push that the Fighting Irish needed. Pitt starting to overshoot their attempted kills at this point. It needs to, again, leash in that power, something they were struggling with the opening of set one. 
blocked, just gets it over the net. Digs it there, Drunik tried to go in motion to get it. Bring it back to her side. Quickly, Monks takes advantage. The reason Monks and both Babcock are able to take advantage is because these hits are so hard from Pitt. You get Hattie Monson on the ground with every single dig in the past three volleys. Another service error for the Panthers. It's Notre Dame, two point lead. Lucy Trump, who's coming off season high, five service aces on Friday against Virginia. Has 16 total service aces on the season compared to just 15 errors. Nick, challenged at the net. Vasquez Gomez lays out for up to Stafford. An attacking error. And point goes towards Notre Dame as they quickly look to their bench to Dan Fisher about whether there's a touch. Looks to his bench, looks to Cat Flood, and the senior shook it off, and he puts the card back into the holster. We'll save his two challenges for later time in the match. Meanwhile, Notre Dame capitalizing on that. Pittsburgh's power is a little bit too much in this set so far to start off. Taffer is able to sneak it in on the opening on the back line and Notre Dame's 3-0 scoring run. Stafford likes to hit towards zone four, and that's a really tough zone to hit in because it's in that corner of the court, so it's hard to judge if you want to hit that back corner, if you want to reach more of zone six, but she's getting it figured out. Zone four on the right side, correct? So four, yep, on the right side then, or five on the right side, excuse me, then six. The server spot is zone one. Lang works it on the deflection. Notre Dame staying present and not allowing when the ball gets turned over to the other side to stay present. You get Lang that's able to go through the seam of the block and Palazzolo is getting her team fired up, needing to see some more action from her, but Lang will take over for now. Very impressive freshman for the Fighting Irish that's added more depth to the squad. Drunik dumps it across, back line creeps. Opening the gray area. Pittsburgh was playing perimeter defense on that, and Drunik perfecting that center dump. Again, it's the no-look pass to the donut of the court. Nicely done. Donut of the court, a little breakfast action here, brunch time. I am realizing it is pretty early when we got here this morning. <laughs> We're met with a nice breakfast. No donuts, though, but there's your donut for the day, Jake. It's not glazed, though. Not glazed. <laughs> Babcock. Now to serve. Freshman number 43rd recruit, the class of 2023. Palazzolo has it rejected by Fairbanks. Wokolo on the block, leading the Panthers with 58 blocks headed into this match. She is just a force, the graduate student from Columbus, Ohio. Sliding to receive. Tarnoff kept it alive. It'll be Trump trying to think about it. But it'll be a challenge from Salima Rockwell, who's challenging whether there was a deflection to allow for the Irish to get it back over. Yeah, that was an interesting exchange. Rockwell called for a touch. Official shook her off, and then she ran towards that challenge card. So she must have had a better vantage point over there with her bench.
So the car will be reversed. There'll be a replay of the point. Since it was whistled dead in that moment, they'll just replay the point for both sides. Off of the challenge, Notre Dame will be able to retain their two they have pocketed for this contest. Notre Dame able to pick up the point after Pitt came over top the net. They're much, leading by four. Yeah, a much needed burst of energy in here to bring more bursts as Charity McDowell coming in in the middle, fired up, getting some fresh legs, hoping to give the Fighting Irish more of a cushion. Fairbanks up to Stafford. Trump. It goes out of bounds and hits the top of the Jumbotron here in Purcell Pavilion. And Trump playing into Coach Fisher's fears of being a problem for this Panther squad. Alexander couldn't get it down. It's a service error. Tori Stafford. Number fourth best outside hitter, 2023 class, adding to these impact freshmen like we've talked about today. Fairbanks gets it down on the block. There goes Fairbanks in Wokolo, the steel wall on the right side. You have some experienced veterans here that are very in sync with each other and almost the same height, which really helps when you're trying to have a block party. Service violation. It's Notre Dame back into control. Pitt with six service errors so far on the match, and that's something that Coach Fisher is not going to be happy about, especially in crunch time in set two. Something he wanted to clean up coming into this is making sure he limited the mistakes they could make. Trump, hard kill. Clicka couldn't get it to a teammate. Notre Dame hanging with the eighth-ranked Pitt Panthers here in set two. Fairbanks, Vasquez Gomez, Palazzola. Fairbanks, white tap, Monson kept it alive somehow. Trump sneaks it through the block, just out of the touch of Wokolo. You can see the frustration happening from the defense. Take a look, left side of your screen, Trump tipping it through the seam of the block. Wokolo got a hand on it, but didn't expect for it to be a tip. Thought it would be more of a hard hit, something that Lucy Trump has done in the last two plays. So good on her for changing it up. Wokolo has it blocked. Trump and McDowell get it up. McDowell gets it across Notre Dame. Up by seven. And they are in control. After falling in set one, the Irish have come out jigging in set two. Lauren Tarnoff has three blocks in, since coming back from a lower body injury. Could be the pivotal moment to get them into success. In that first set, hitting a whopping 667. That is what this Fighting Irish needs to keep that winning streak alive. With Tarnoff, eight and a half blocks per match as well. Without her, just below seven per match. So not only is she great at hitting, but she's also great at being a steel wall for the Fighting Irish. Fairbanks gets a hard kill to try and get the momentum swung back to the Panthers' side. That's uh, seeing Fairbanks in rare form. She does setter dump every once in a while, but to have your setter with that powerful of an arm on the outside is truly impressive. And a nice trick from Coach Fisher coming out of the break. Service error again. Now their seventh of the day for Pitt. Gets the Irish back to the service line. 
seven service errors for Pitt compared to just one for Notre Dame, who's had a great day from behind the line. Fairbanks gets the kill. Fisher is looking to Fairbanks for some variety, the setter, somebody that Notre Dame might not be expecting. She entered today's match with 31 kills and will now serve as she does it all. Yeah, preseason All-ACC honoree. Drunick up to the sophomore Trump, who has it blocked by Monks. Just on the fingertips, able to set it down. Notre Dame has caught the Panthers' defense off guard with that tip before, but Monks timed that block so she was ready and could adjust for that tip over the net. Up to Lang. Babcock comes in contact with the net. Excuse me, they'll say four touches against the Pitt Panthers. It's the Irish support. Fairbanks up to Monx. Finds the opening between Drunick and Palazzolo. Quickly stifling the momentum for the Irish. What a gem from Fairbanks. Perfectly set up that one set for Monks, who can work so well from the middle. Had to slide over a couple steps, but she got there in time and pounded it right down in front of the 10-foot line. Logan Mosley in to serve. Turn off, gets it in. Behind the back line. It came creeping in. Notre Dame exploits it. Tarnoff not only able to get around that block, but to make it touch the tape in the back, that is a perfectly placed hit from the middle from her. Monson comes in sliding. Fairbanks up to Mox. Catches Monson down on the ground. Same type of hit for Monks, but with different momentum in system once again. But a short set that she likes and able to hit just a little bit to the right where there was not a Notre Dame defender present. Monks tied for the team lead right now with seven kills, hitting at a 667 percentage. Fairbanks. To Stafford, sit through the block. Panthers now only down four to Notre Dame in this second set. Stafford now leading the charge with eight kills for the Panthers off of 16 attempts. Got flood. Drunick to Lang. Has it blocked by Wokolo. Another perfectly timed block party. Left side of your screen, Babcock and Wokolo able to shift their bodies mid-air. Now that is truly impressive from not just one blocker, but both of them on the Panthers team. Targeting Palazzolo. Turn off on the slide. Talked about it coming back from break. Having Lauren Tarnoff be able to contribute that kill is huge. And something that Tarnoff's able to do is really tool that block. If she sees that she needs to hit those hands so that's able to deflect off in Notre Dame's favor is truly a gem that she has in her toolbox. Anitsis to Mosley. Fairbanks up to Babcock. Monson couldn't get her platform on it. Just like that, Panthers within three. Electric kill from Babcock. You got to give Hattie Monson credit for being the receiving end of a 6-5 powerful outside hitters hits all match long. Really great effort from both players. Monson, Superman dies for it. Tarnoff has it blocked. 
This time, Tarnoff did not have enough time to adjust to go either over the block or move it to the left side of the block because of the time of the serve. Notre Dame calls a timeout, and for Pitt, they were looking for their defense coming in, something that Coach Fisher talked to us about, how it didn't go their way against Louisville on Friday, how they need to take that next step. And he said they wanted to focus on their offense too, but he kept saying, ugh, our defense needs to be better. They're one, they have one of the best defenses in the ACC. Ranks first in the NCAA for just above three blocks per set and limiting their opponents to 140. But Fisher said, we let our opponents hit 400 in the game versus number six Louisville, and that can't happen. We're not gonna win games with percentages like that. So in turn, putting that focus on the defense. The offense is there, just need to get down into their platforms and stop the fighting Irish. And it's there, that's what, it was very evident on the call that he knows it's there for his team as the numbers show. It's now just putting that into practice. Putting that into practice and eliminating those errors as well. You talk about seven service errors. They have nine attacking errors. Where if you can, one blocking error, if you can limit those errors, because those are self-harmed in those situations. Exactly, you can imagine. They'll probably do some more drills and practice for that, but even despite having the air, still just a two-point set, which shows how gritty this Pittsburgh squad is. Fisher said he also wanted his team to come out with grittiness today. So just the fact that they have been piling up those airs and are still so close with a great chance to win this set says a lot about Fisher's culture and the talent that's on his team. Babcock with the strong serve. Palazzolo off the top of the net. Fairbanks. Drunick up to Palazzolo. Catches Babcock sleeping. Palazzolo's been pretty quiet so far this match. That'll be her third kill. Left side of your screen, she is, or right side of your screen, excuse me, she was right there with her approach. When she has space and she gets a good in-system set, again, we talked about how lethal she can be from the outside, but she just hasn't had that many opportunities so far this match because it's being so well defended on Pittsburgh's side of the net. Alexander targets Mosley with the serve. Drunick to Palazzolo, goes cross court. Irish. Now, Four points away from getting this second set. Coach Fisher wants to use one of his timeouts to talk it over with his team. Sydney Palazzolo needs to take that next step. Only has four kills today, which is second on the team, but when talking to Coach Rockle, she needs to be the focal point. She does, and if they want to come back, they need to utilize her more in this set and then the following set. We look at Palazzolo's stats, and she leads the Fighting Irish by over 100 kills. That's triple digits, folks. Leads team in service aces. She's second in digs, so she has all the tools, but needs to not be so quiet this match. But as I mentioned before, it's just because of those opportunities, because Pittsburgh has prevented the Fighting Irish from that. But you can see that Palazzolo transferred from a high point. She averaged just just under four kills per set. It was the 2022, 2022 Big South Player of the Year and well-deserved, might I add. And Coach Rockwell has such a smile on her face when she talks about the junior transfer, about what she brings to the team and the experience she has. High Point went last year to the NCAA tournament, something that Notre Dame didn't do, but now has the experience of playing those high-caliber volleyball matches that she's able to bring in along with Drunick, the two transfers for this team. High Point also won the Big South tourney, so she's used to playing in those matches that are tough with really great opponents. So she's also comfortable and collected, similar to her setter, Nicole Drew. And that's what Rockwell's looking for. She's looking for those comp players to be able to lead these squads, especially when they're playing down. But now they have a nice, comfortable four-point cushion. Pitt, they will respond after the timeout. Says Gomez was set to come in, almost thought she was coming in. She will come in now. So 
have sophomore defensive specialist Dylan Griffin coming in to serve from Foothill Ranch, California. She's played 24 sets so far this season. This will be her 25th. Changing up this subbing pattern a little bit for Fisher. Dernick to Lucy Trump. Couldn't get it down. A good idea from Trump, but a better eye from the Panthers defense, knowing when to let that go, because you never know with Trump. Is she going to hit too hard or too soft? But best for their defense to let that one go, and it paid off. Drunick to Palazzolo, Fairbanks as it blocked. That set was a little bit too tight for Drunick. Not super easy to work with when you get tight sets like that. You have to either adjust really quick on the fly or just tip it over, and you don't want to give the Panthers a free ball. Notre Dame will use their timeout. Purcell Pavilion's packed today to see the number eighth ranked Pitt Panthers take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and that's something that has been a consistent statement all year long, has been the crowds have been showing out 124% growth since Rockwell took over, and now in her second year, grew 50% since last year. The impact she has right now is huge. Rockwell didn't even know that she helped increase the attendance by that much. She kind of was shocked to hear that. Because you can look at those numbers just from going 478 fans in 2021 all the way to 1,214. Everybody in this chair counts to come out for the Fighting Irish, let alone on fall break. These Fighting Irish students are on fall break and still here supporting. We see those green Go Irish banners everywhere. It's a sea of Irish in here today. She gives all the credit to her marketing team being out in social media, being in the dining halls, being in the posters, and being out in the community. Show face, understanding that Notre Dame is a smaller community, only 8,000 undergrads. They don't have that much to pull from like she did at Penn State. You got to go talk to the community, be out in the community, speaking at boys and girls clubs, speaking at schools being able to have that personal connection to get them in the seats. And also building a great community within her own team. She FaceTimes her players a lot. She's texting them. She's saying, we talk about more than just volleyball, too. Shoes, clothes, everything in between. And that culture has been accepted very well by this community. Palazzolo is able to pick up the kill. And Notre Dame now three away from stealing this second set our lips to their ears because they are starting to get Sydney Palazzolo fired up to hopefully finish out this set for the Irish as the Panthers look to retaliate. Palazzolo now tied for the team leading kills with five. KO sets Wokolo. Pitts responds quickly. A great shot to Manitzas, who was there in place, had a great platform, but needed to be one step further. It's so hard to judge when you get a hitter that tall and you don't know the velocity or the direction. Turnick to Palazzolo. Has it go out of bounds, and Pitt now tied with Notre Dame after possessing Strong lead set two. Palazzolo trying to go more for that line, but Pru has proven to be a little bit more successful with the cross court shot today. He's trying to get into it here. Trump finds an opening just out of the reach of a KO. Jacob, it's another donut, not a glazed one for you, but nonetheless, a donut in the middle of the court. Again, Panthers set up in perimeter defense, and Lucy Trump knows that she's able to tip it right into that center hole. Palazzolo used the top of the net. Ao to Fairbanks. McDowell blocks it at the net. Drunick to Trump. Ao sets to Fairbanks. And a donut on the other side. Back tied at 23. Donuts for everybody. Fairbanks getting in on this action as well. Backward set and able to go above the block from freshman Ava Lane. 
able to adjust her body to the left. Kind of an awkward position in the air, but she's able to capitalize. Fairbanks already has a service ace today. Serves it across. Drunick, one-handed, set to try and go to Lang. And now Pitt at set point, just like that. Notre Dame was in control. Panthers now came growling back. You gotta wonder if Fisher putting in other players can contribute to that, kind of throwing off Notre Dame's defense, putting in Griffin, changing things up, having Fairbanks hit rather than set. Drink. Up to Lang, has it blocked. And the Panthers come firing back to win set two after a hard fought set for the Irish. We'll head back home on October 18th to face Virginia, who Notre Dame beat in three sets, or three and, and one on Friday. Marks continues where the Panthers left off. She'll now go back to serve. And Alonx, the graduate student and transfer from Michigan State. Schrader, up to McDowell. Babcock. As her kill go through the deflection on the block. Like Rockwell is changing it up a little bit, putting Fiona Schrader in at setter. She was the team's primary setter last year, but she's actually truly an outside hitter. She's just versatile enough to where she can do both. Maybe she's just what this Irish squad needs to get back on track and build up a better lead. Fiona Schrader set a, was the primary setter in the 5-1 last year for the team. They're coming in trying to do a little bit here. I remember asking Rockwell last year, I said, is this a mistake having Schrader as your third leader in kill? She goes, nope, that's not a mistake. She's known for her setter dumps and she really likes to hit. Olivia Babcock will go back to serve. Watson goes to dig it. Trump gets it across. Stafford has it blocked by Trump. Babcock tried to go through again. Tarnoff being strong on the block. Stafford changes up. And just out of the reach of the diving. Fiona Schrader. Pittsburgh coming out strong. Stafford also playing around with tipping the ball over. Usually a hard hitter. Cross court shot able to go line but notice there was a slight hole between zone one and zone two, perfect for a kill. Babcock all day has had fast serves and another one there. Off of her hand and across the net. What's it's gotta great, be under a second. Yes, and what's great about Babcock is the variety of serves she's able to get. It's gonna be a timeout quickly for Notre Dame. It's been the Pitt Panthers coming out, trying to take charge and walk away. Set compared to their opponents at just above two. And today, in today's match, the Panthers have 13 total blocks, while Notre Dame is at three. This block party is something that Coach Fisher has put a lot of emphasis on. He has a lot of athleticism and size on his team, and he's really trying to utilize that today, and it's proving to be very effective. Trader up to Trump, kept alive. Stafford has Monson dig it out, but it was just too strong. She got it over the net herself. Stafford and Mosley with the great eyes over here, making sure to follow that ball all the way to the line. You can never tell if it's going to be in or out, but they follow every single ball just to make sure. Babcock. Strong serve again. Babcock in motion. Sets it down for another kill. Lang and Tarnoff tried to tee up on the block on the left side. But Babcock, a master and able to go around that.
Palazzolo digs it and gets it across somehow. Blocked by Tarnoff. Tarnoff immediately pointing towards Palazzolo, understanding it was all her. Take a look, left side of your screen, Tarnoff, that is a block solo for the middle hitter, middle blocker. She's had quite the games so far today. Been a presence not only up front with the seal wall, but also with hitting. Okolo in air straight or trying to dump it over. Klicka gets it across somehow. Stafford sets it down. Again, another block. The block party during the point for the Irish led by Tarnoff. We talk about Pittsburgh being explosive with the blocks, but now take a look at Nader, Notre Dame, this whole entire sequence. I give credit to Pittsburgh for keeping this ball in play for multiple volleys, but Tarnoff was just relentless from the middle of the court. Fairbanks tried to sneak it over, but goes out of bounds and is trying to shift directions and get cheeky with the tape. But Coach Fisher calling on the challenge card to go look at the monitor. Initial ruling was ball is out. Again, he will look to his players to help him make that decision as our official. Checking out the replay. ABCA officiating crew of Robert Kyle, the first referee, and Devin McLarty, second referee who's at the monitor right now. Let's slow this down just a little bit. The initial ruling was it was out. We're looking for any bit of tape, and I think that caught some tape there, Jacob. We're looking for yeah. any bit of white. I think that is going to be ruled in Pittsburgh's favor. Let's yeah. get a different angle here from the top. A little bit hard to see with Monson in the back. You can tell from the trajectory that will be a point Pittsburgh. So a great challenge by Coach Fisher here. And now a little bit of a change. Harmony Sample now into the game. This is her first set of the season. No stats recorded for her. First time that she's coming in. The sophomore setter from Louisville, Texas. Started in four matches in the 2022 season. Sample up to Tarnoff. Schrader gets it across. Mikeo goes searching. Sample. Up to Palazzolo, however, they'll say Sample crossed the center line. So that first season jitters there early in her season this year. Yes, this is her first set. Well, it's a lot of her teammates, 60th set. So it's going to take her a little bit of time to settle in naturally. Bocolo gets it down quickly. Great court vision from Wokolo, able to see that Palazzolo was the only one in the back row at that point, getting them out of system and hitting towards that back corner in zone one. Sample up to Schrader. To Lang. Ava Lang. The big kill, bringing Manitsis at the Irish back on the service line. Now Sample is cooking. What a great set from her in that sequence. A kill from Bayless. Goes out of bounds, though. 
This is Bayless' 27th set so far of the season. She saw some playing action on Friday, but we can see Coach Fisher is also trying to put in some fresh legs. Fairbanks able to sneak it right in off the deflection. And Rachel Flairbanks, maybe a setter on the roster, but she is so much more than just dishing it out. She can do everything. She can serve, has 14 service aces on the season so far, entered the match with 31 kills, most of which were setter dumps. And then, of course, leading the team with 404 assists as the team's starting setter. Palazzolo and a miscommunication between Stafford and Flood gets the Irish a kill. Thought the ball was dead after that. You can see both of them not ready for that. The ball did kind of dance awkwardly on the top of the net for a brief moment there. Definitely hard to see, especially when you're in that back row. Bayless can't climb over the net. Mistimed approach for the freshman out of Plano, Texas. An opportunity to maybe tip it over. Bayless says take two and gets the kill. Take two and is successful going through that seam of the block. Again, the block on the Fighting Irish side, not completely connected, not like a wall, more like a barrier that time. Fairbanks, dangerous server. Palazzolo, try to sneak in another donut. Sample, can't dig it out. Pass it up to one of her teammates. A great look by Babcock. You can see she's utilizing all that space and going for foot or so behind the 10 foot line between zone one and two, not being well defended by Notre Dame. Sample to Schrader. And Fiona Schrader, it'll work the deflection. Here comes Schrader. She is comfortable from that outside position just as much as she is setting. She was listed as an outside hitter when she first arrived to the Fighting Irish as a freshman, but has been utilized in many different positions. Stepped up when needed. Schrader and Monson go diving. Both can't get there in time. And Schrader, Coach Rockwell calls her a team first player. What does the team need me to do? She will do to allow her team the best opportunity to get a win. And that play being a prime example, she goes for that pass for that first touch. Sometimes she goes for the set, and sometimes she goes for the kill. So she's on touch one, two, and three. Never seen a player like it. The passes to Trump, gets it over. Dafford, had to sneak it in. Trump goes running. Stafford, Manitsis. Schrader setting cross court to Trump, works it through the block. Pitt's able to keep alive. Babcock finally handles the Irish defense, gets the kill. Babcock going down line, and not one touch, but two attempts on that. Was slowed down a little bit at the front of the net. For Pitt, they have made a large contribution, understanding their team has now taken it to the next level in the ABCA and NCAA volleyball. And their athletic department is putting their money where their mouth is and where they believe it with their new expansion program in Victory Heights. This is going to be a wonderful facility. As you can see, the mock-up here, we've got a competition arena and sports performance complex. Here's a look at what the complex is going to look like as far as volleyball. You see that nice sea of blue and red, and you get the practice courts too, blue and yellow everywhere. Coach Fisher seemed to be most excited about the practice courts, having some extra space to work with his number eight team in the country. Should be opening fall of 2025. It's about a $240 million multi-performance facility. So yes, this will be for volleyball, 3,000 seats, but also gymnastics and wrestling will occupy this space. 
through talking to Coach Fisher about what does Victory Heights provide you as a recruiting standpoint? He said, for a long time, it's been in the works, it's been in discussion since 2020, but now starting to see them break ground on it finally. Like, all right, we think it's finally coming into fruition and being able to pitch it to now the recruits here that it will be there when they start. Yeah, for sure. And he said he can't imagine what it's going to look like when it's actually built and when it's actually here and he can actually take recruits through the building, show them all the wonderful accommodations that they will have as a student athlete at Pittsburgh. Big investment by the university into their athletic programs and facilities. And gets it across. Box attacks it out of bounds. We saw a couple of Box hits like that where she likes to go to the right from the middle, but just this time the jump a little bit, a little bit too hard on the hit. Just a hair out of bounds. Fairbanks, just effort, hard kill. Monson's able to dig out. Palazzolo will just get it across with the palm. That might be enough, and it is. Palazzolo was able to work him out of system. Gets the point. And I give full credit MVP of that play was actually libero Hattie Monson. That first touch is so important. And for her to be on the ground on these hits and able to get that ball up for a great touch for the setter is truly impressive. McDowell able to get the deflection. Notre Dame re-entering the conversation. It'll be enough for a timeout from Dan Fisher. Tyranny McDowell with a bullet to the back row. They haven't really utilized her too much on the hitting standpoint, but you can tell Rockwell is really trying to add some variation to this offense right now. She's put in three different setters so far, and she's looking to different hitters, not just Trump. Trump was very, um, she was trumping. <laughs> she definitely was trumping in the first couple of sets, but now we're taking a look at McDowell. We're taking a look at Tarnoff and some other players who are able to make those plays in times of need. For Notre Dame understanding, everyone's gotta be contributing, but gotta have Sydney Palazzolo leading the way, has seven kills leading the team right now. For the Irish, gotta take a deep breath here. Been holding a tough pit team really close to that. Yeah, all three sets have been really close so far, and they are hanging right with them. Just a four-point difference, and that is totally enough to come back from behind. Again, we talk about the experience that's on Notre Dame and how Rockwell says they're calm, cool, collected. She said they have great chemistry. They know what to study the scout well, so they know what to expect, but she's focused on wanting them to take more care of their individual game and just be a little bit tougher in moments like these. Collected, ready to go after this much needed timeout for them. Palazzolo gets the service violation after the pit timeout. Ending the Irish's 3 0 scoring run. Now Dylan Griffin back in to serve for the Panthers. Griffin served as a serving sub mostly last year in 20 sets for the 2022 Panthers team. Trader up to Lang. Goes out of bounds. Nice idea by the freshman Lang hitting that back corner just a couple inches too far, overextended and didn't quite swing all the way through on the attack. Quick stoppage by the second referee. Gets us back underway. Trump registers another donut. Maybe a half dozen today. That needs to be a new stat, like DGT, <laughs> colon, donuts. How many of them? She probably has three at this point. That's something that she's been perfecting from the outside. The donuts happen, remember, when the Panthers are playing perimeter defense and are not quite in that first rotation. 
Fairbanks. Up to Babcock. Ava Lang, the freshman. That will take care of business. A much needed push from the freshman. She's a four star player by volleyball recruiter and has won many different championships throughout her high school career. Take a look right side of your screen with that block. Almost like she was doing a crunch in midair. Notre Dame taking a little bit of a page out of Pittsburgh. Saw there on the sap pop three blocks in this third set for the Irish Nun for the Panthers here. Trying to use their own identity against them. Lang. Has it deflected out of bounds to get the Irish the point. We talk about using their strength against them. Lang going up to tool the block, hit it to the left side of the blocker's hands, was able to deflect off and go just out of bounds. Austin using the home court advantage here. Fans starting to really provide an impact with their noise. Harmony Sample comes back in. Sample behind the back to Schrader. Gets pit the point for great. one out of bounds. Yeah, great set from Sample, but Schrader just overshot that a little bit. Going cross court today mostly for the outside hitter, but Sample was exactly where she needed to be in that moment. Sample to Lang. Notre Dame able to pick up the point. Off the deflection. Alyssa Manitsis to come in to serve. Fairbanks has it rejected. And again, Fiona Schrader and Lauren Tarnoff. Here to get a block. That's good court awareness from Schrader, knowing that everybody is in coverage on Penn's side of their hitter, seeing that there's a pocket in the defense in the back. Goes looking for Palazzolo, flat-footed, gets it across. Bayless, hard kill that Monson has sent into the seats here at Purcell. Souvenir for the Irish fans as Pitt is closing and closing. Fighting Irish not getting giving up. Sample behind the back to Schrader. Quickly set down. Schrader giving all the props to the sophomore. I love the adjustment that Schrader is able to make just by shifting her body a couple steps and able to give a variation of really hard hits, usually going for that corner, but went for more for the middle of the court this time. All the power and such control from the outside hitter and setter. See Alexander makes her presence known quickly coming in the serve. Get it across. Point. Bonks. Gets it over. Schrader comes in. Diving and somersaulting. Can't get there quick enough. The look on Sample's face. She knew she had to get out of the way for that one, but was in the right place at the right time. Just didn't quite know the velocity of what was coming. Fairbanks floats it across. 
and gets a service ace. Her second of the day. Second of the day and 16th on the season, giving her a 500 service ace to air percentage. So take a look, five kills to go with her two aces. Sample. Schrader. Passes it to Bayless. Bayless off of the block. Has it come down in fair territory. What a difficult shot to defend from Bayless. Went right across the net. Pit at match point with Fairbanks. Sample up to Palazzolo. Bayless has Monson, gets it across on the dig. Bayless again, Monson over again. Fairbanks to Babcock. Schrader, think it keeps it alive. Great volley between both teams here. Sample, up to Schrader. To Bayless, Manitsis is there. Sample to Palazzolo, flat-footed. Gets it across. Manitsis gets it across. Monks can't finish. Irish with a hard fought point. Wow, what a volley. What a sequence. So many plays that can go in the highlight reel at that point. The grit, the fight that you see from this fighting Irish defense. Pitt being relentless, but Notre Dame saying, we are not finished with you yet. Great on all fronts for Notre Dame. Alyssa Manitsis came up big in that point. Irish now serving. Monks has it blocked. Now up to Babcock. Pitt will able to pick up the point on the violation against the Irish. Off of a touch, and this is what Coach Fisher was looking for. 